it's not like you have to necessarily have one million followers, but when you look like a brand that should have those one million followers, you then pull people like magnet because you are positioned as like the you know the winner. I call these people the sovereign creators because they're just pulling people like magnets. Like whenever someone checks their profile, it's like, yeah, I want to follow this person. Hello and welcome to the Leverage 3 podcast. This is the show that helps you leverage the talent and tactics of high performers. I'm Craig Shoemaker and today's guest is Claudia Stellner. Claudia is scaling her one person creator business to $100,000 a year and is sharing what she learns along the way. She has a loyal and dedicated following on Twitter where she posts about writing, psychology, and making an impact. Now, there's two more things that you need to know that makes Claudia special. First, she's the first ever return guest to the Leverage Tree podcast, and she's 14 years old. Claudia, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's it's been an incredible journey for you, I would say, the last few years. But even since the last time we've talked, why don't you catch us up a little bit about what you've been up to and what you've seen in that time? Yeah, so one of the things that I think has rapidly changed is the things I focus on. So I used to be like heavily focused on growth, you know, and engagement, stuff like that. But now I focus more on not growing audience as much, but like more on leveraging the audience I have right now and more on monetizing it because I don't think I need any more followers because I feel like 26K or whatever that number is, like I can make a good use of that. So uh, I've been trying to... Uh, I've been working really hard to launch my course that's launching in a few weeks and I've also been able to launch a consulting offer which I consider a good progress and yeah so and also I feel like I've been finally able to like discover the philosophy that makes me different from most of the accounts that talk about the similar topic as I do so yeah those this is like the theme of the of the past few months. That's pretty awesome. I, and your differentiation among a kind of crowded market is definitely something that I, I, I want to get into. But knowing the journey that you've, you've gone through, what's been the hardest, like what's the biggest hurdle that you've had to, to overcome? Like the, one of the biggest struggles was that I, at some point, I was like growing super fast and like, but as everyone says, like growth at some point becomes pretty destructive. And that's what happened to me because I have started struggling with burnouts, you know, and like ruts, creative ruts a lot. And I felt like I was in like a sort of like a downward spiral because whatever I did, I even like bought a course for, you know, for more accountability and stuff like that. That I, But I just like still kept seeing myself going down and still like I was missing this kind of creative energy. And to the present day, I don't know what that was. Maybe that was some like weird impact of you know winter because i'm super sensitive to like you know weather and like it has huge impact on my mood and stuff like that but i don't know it's been super super like weird period but i told myself that since the new year i'm just gonna try to change things and i eventually did that i've changed a changed a bit about my strategy i've changed a bit about how i write code content about how you know my positioning stuff like that and although still i still keep refining how i go about conquering the digital world, I feel like I'm finally like on the right path right now. So that has been a super hard thing to do, but I'm proud I'm like on the other side of it right now. So so what are you doing now, like specifically that's different than what you did say three or four months ago? So uh, as I mentioned previously, is that right now I'm fully focused on monetization, especially like if you're, if we are speaking like of what I do specifically these days, then it's like I'm just solely focused on raising, you know, my audience's awareness level so I can launch my offer and build a hype around that. So now 99% of content you'll see on my email list, Twitter, everything is based around the main theme of that course. And uh, speaking of what I would do generally if I wouldn't have anything to launch, then uh, I'm more focused on creating insights that are not necessarily like unique but are super deep so it's not like i'm not i I try to avoid shallow platitudes and like this you know contentless content but i try to before i try to tweet something i try to really like take a deep dive into those concepts i try to pursue my curiosity and then i try to 
put everything I've researched about that topic on paper and I tried to condense it in the most clear and well articulated well articulated way possible. And I feel like this is what actually makes up good content, you know, good tweets. And then I can maybe take all of my notes and turn it into a newsletter. So I feel like the biggest change has been the like prioritizing the depth of insights rather than, you know, engagement and mm. like growth and stuff like that. So let, let's dive into to this offer uh, a little bit because I, it's funny because I, I think people oftentimes are really scared to to kind of make this leap. So you've you've gathered attention, like I said, you you truly have a loyal following uh, of people who enjoy the the content that you put out. So what what was it like coming up with the idea for what you were going to offer and did you struggle emotionally trying to figure out like, I, am I ready for this? Should I do it now? Or did this just seem like the next logical step in your, your journey? Yeah, so definitely there's been a lot of mental battles within that. But the way I came up with this idea, it's like somewhere around January, February, I started like discovering a lot this concept of like why some creators are like they seem that they're almost effortlessly growing much faster than those creators who try super hard to, you know, chase their followers. And I've noticed that the one biggest dif differentiator between the accounts that grow fast and be between the accounts that don't, it isn't, you know, they, they aren't any hacks or consistency or whatever. It's usually just um, whether that person is someone who is actually worth following or not. And I know that this sounds super basic, but yeah, if we just look at my content, I try to constantly highlight the, the idea that you should not focus on building an audience, you should focus on building yourself in a way that's going to help you attract that audience effortlessly, which includes things like building a profitable skill, position it, positioning it in a way that's unique and that makes you as like that, that, that makes you the only option for the your, your true audience. Um, it points us back to the thing I mentioned with like writing content, you know, pursue your curiosity to have a content synthesis system that helps you like come up with content that, that, that only you can come up with. So it's unique and lots of other things. And I decided that that offer, that course is all going to be based on building all the skills that you need in order to become someone worth following. So you'll never have to chase your audience again. And to the... I know that was a longer answer, but to the second part of the question, I've been struggling with this a lot. Like, this idea is super old. It's like, yeah, somewhere around January, February, I started building the course. And the first launch date that I, like, came up with was the 12th of March. And it's like, it's the middle of June, so I probably didn't, didn't do a good job with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've been doubting myself a lot. Like the first time I didn't feel ready then I decided to change the structure. Then I realized that maybe other people aren't ready because very little people know that I'm that I'm about to launch something. And yeah, so I've been battling with this a lot. But uh, what truly really helped me was that uh, my friend Virgil Brewster, who, who has also been on the podcast, he has recommended to me that if I'm struggling to build a hype, I should try to do like a beta test offer. So I should uh, charge half the price for the course and position the offer as like build it with me. And that's exactly what I did. And about eight people bought mm -hmm. it and I feel like even more people wanted to because uh, that's the funny thing in the promotional email, I, I forgot to post the link to the actual sales page and about 20 people replied to it like they're interested in that <laughs> they want the link. <laughs> And like it wasn't so actually the first time. You did it on purpose to measure intent. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I feel like it has to look like it because this isn't the first time this happened to me. It's like the third time I always forgot to post the actual link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people were interested. But I uh, only said there were like eight spots or something like that, and I got super good feedback, and that gave me the audience, like the sorry, the confidence, the confidence, and the the push I needed for that. So, and that's the eventual step that made me to like finish the course completely and to start to actually pick an actual launch date. And yeah. So now I'm just building towards stick that. to it. Yeah. Nine days left. I, I have a plan. I feel like the plan that's is awesome. going great. And yeah, super excited. 
Hey, this is Craig, and I wanted to take a second to invite you to join me on Twitter, where I talk about the interviews with all my amazing guests, and where I help you build a lucrative online course business. So look me up by my name, Craig Shoemaker, and make sure to say hi. That's great. Well, congratulations, because there are so many people who want to do what you're doing and have wanted to do many of the things that you've done and have a difficult time getting there. So it's, it's like no small feat um, that you've accomplished this. So I'm, I'm just, you know, congratulations. It's, it's incredible. Thank you. And I, the reason I was smiling so big, yeah, as, as you were talking, it was I felt almost as if you had read my mind because there were a number of, of quotes and, and things in your tweets that I pulled out that I wanted to kind of speak back to you and give you an opportunity to dive in more. And, and that was one that you put up that said, your audience is a byproduct of becoming the person that's worth following in the first place. And so this kind of sounds like this is the, the thesis of your entire course. So when we hear a statement like that, it's almost like, well, yeah, of course, but obviously there's so much more nuance to it than that. So tell us a little bit more about how you see this. So the way I see this is um, actually the way that this philosophy like was born in my mind is that once I was reading, I think it was an article from Danko, and he was talking about, I, I don't even know what was the topic, but he was like, if you want to uh, grow an audience, you should create a profile that looks like it should have 1 million followers. And this one sentence, it has resonated with me like so much. It's not like you have to necessarily have 1 million followers, but when you look like a brand that should have those 1 million followers, you then pull people like Magnet because you are positioned as like the, you know, the winner, that one cool kid that everyone wants to talk to. You're just like, you're, you're basically, and that's, these. I call these people the sovereign creators because they're just pulling people like Magnets. Like whenever someone checks their profile, it's like, yeah, I want to follow this person. Obviously, yeah, like not everyone, but you know, their target audience specifically. So they're just like the perfect magnet for the people sure. they want to, that they want to attract. And so that's what I, yeah, that's what I mean, be, uh, like behind that advice. And so it comes down to, it sounds like, you know, you mentioned before, there's a difference between chasing followers versus, I guess, chasing who you want to continually be a better person. Is that is that a good way to articulate it? Yeah, I feel. Yeah, it, it's a good way to say it. Yeah, like the the way I think of this is. It, it's not that uh, it's not that like becoming a better person or like you know a more skilled person will have will like automatically lead to building a to like growing a better following. It also requires because uh yeah, I view this. This like like the whole becoming the sovereign creator thing in three steps. You have to first build yourself, so that requires building the right skills, following your obsession, so you can create things only you can create, and like, yeah. So basically, this so you just like become. You you have to first become that person, but then you can be the coolest person ever. But people won't know because you maybe aren't able to articulate your value that well, and this is the next part that is basically marketing yourself and. Here's are things like positioning and learning persuasive writing, so copywriting, storytelling, and stuff like that comes into play. And that now you're just like you're you're a cool person. People know that, but they might not they might not follow you because they might not know that you exist. And that's where the third part comes, and that's distributing yourself. And the what this part is about it's about building you know network of both your fans and your peers or like probably like the same audience same audience size as you are and then the big creators that uh are able to spread your work uh, you know and and so build yourself market yourself distribute yourself that's the and that's basically the whole blueprint right so it's not just about building yourself but it, it, for the most part yeah it is cool so let's talk a little bit about how you've done this in in your own life and with your own brand right you have Dickie Bush and Nicholas Cole Ship 30 for 30 or teaching writing. You have Kieran Drew. He's got his whole thing, high impact writing. You've got George Ten in his community. And I would absolutely list your name among these, these people as, as a peer um, and uh, as, as a, a person who's 
you know, teaching people how to write, how to express themselves. So knowing that there's this much context and this much essentially competition for attention and eventually dollars from people, how are you positioning yourself to stand out from that crowd? So the thing I believe is that um, it's a lot about storytelling and it's like every single creator that is standing out has a unique story or unique belief that was created with a story that makes them stand out from everyone else. And logically, not everyone's going to like that story, but your goal is to pull in the people that will because somehow the story resonates with them because somehow like they have a similar story or they have like a similar ambition as you used to have and now you've like did what they want to do so you you like you're already expert right now for them and it so it's not really about just standing out and it's not the game of i want to pull out as much people as possible but it's about i want to pull in the right people because as they say you need only the you need only what's the number yeah 1000 true fans in order to uh make a living or something like that right so it's 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 just being, yeah. It's 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 the, for the most part, for the most part, it's being authentic. So you pull in the right people, right? Because as they say, your vibe attracts your tribe. And if you don't have your vibe clearly defined, then you won't have as engaged and as trusty audience because they're like all kinds of people, but none of them really agree with you because you're not super strong and super expressive about your philosophies and about your story. So you need to find ways you can articulate your philosophies, your values, your beliefs. And it's okay to be, you know, bipolar in here. It's okay to even lose followers. It's okay to have people that disagree with you. But it's important because if you don't do that, then you also won't find the people that will eventually become your friends, that will eventually pay for anything you put out, that will eventually buy your book, that will eventually even, like, I don't know, pay for spending time with you in person, you know. So that's... That's what you're aiming for, not for, you know, as I've said, not for pulling as much people, but pulling the right people. So that reminds me of one of the, another quote of yours that I wanted to bring up regarding your philosophy, and that is focusing on principles over tactics. And I was wondering if you could kind of unpack that a little bit for us. Yeah, so it's like a lot of people, including me in the past, they're sometimes too over-focused on super minor problems and they think that solving those problems will like help them skyrocket their growth, or they're like too they're drowning too much in the super small tactics that won't really do anything for them, right? And I can see why people usually fall for these traps, you know. So like they, they they're super small. They they have been on the journey for some time. They have been consistent, but they're still don't see any progress. And then it's super easy to get pulled in. Uh, any threat or any you know email subject line that says gain 10,000 followers in the next 24 hours right like it's super easy because you're desperate you have tried everything and now you you're looking for every single small tweak to your strategy that will like do big things but it's not really the way it works right so i feel like sometimes if people would just zoom out and try to focus on what's really important to focus to focus on the the main principles just like study study the big picture right this if you would just if people would study less how to hack the algorithm and more about for example human psychology copywriting uh, what captures attention then they would be much more successful than if they would try to figure out the best you know words to use in their hooks well okay so now some of that is kind of related though right because when you're writing a hook and you're you're writing text in order to affect someone emotionally that is going to harness these psychological triggers that you've pulled out so do you see there being is it just a balance thing to where it's just like don't get so focused on like templates and certain wording or whatever and zoom out or is there more of an interplay between the two it's like it's okay to focus on those small things at some point but at first you should like study the big picture, right? So especially if uh, you're not growing fast, especially if you're going from like zero to one, try to, if we're talking about hooks, then first try to just study, just yeah, try to study human psychology, try to study persuasive writing, study the basics of cap capturing attention, 
some basic copywriting frameworks. And once you learn and practice that, then it's that I feel like then then there is the space for diving more into the details of you know what words are better triggers for people, what how to I don't know order the words better in a sentence so it sounds better. Like these things, they also have their their spot sometime on your on your writing journey. But at the beginning, it's all about mastering the basic principles and to make sure you actually understand them and are able to implement them. And also, like, most of the time, when you see the big picture and when you understand the principles, then the techniques, they reveal themselves. So then you also, mm. like, know the the small tweaks you can make to make it all more effective. So when when you're learning or want to learn more about these big picture things, you know, psychological triggers and, and that, where do you go to find that information? That's a good question. Mm, I usually have a list of people that I know I can go for. I can check out when I want to learn more about a topic and not necessarily, and I don't necessarily consume things from those people, but I also know that these people can point you to good resources. So I usually, so for example, when I would come to learning about human psychology or copywriting, I would go to George Dent's Twitter and I would see some of the resources he had recommended earlier and I would go down that rabbit hole, right? Because uh, especially when you want to understand the, the big picture, then what really helps is looking at the concept from different perspectives. So consuming, not, not drowning too much, you know, as they call it, the tutorial, the tutorial hell, but reading a few books, watching a few videos, and then you'll start, you'll start seeing what, like, what are the main principles that all of these resources have in common, and these are super good at helping you understand what the big picture is. And obviously, if you want to make it more effective, then you have to put it in practice and try to actually write something. But yeah, that that is my go-to strategy when I want to learn anything. Not just for Twitter, but even like for school. Just trying to understand the big picture of, of things. So I feel like this is like a timeless strategy that's effective everywhere. So I want to thread two different pieces of things that you've said together and give you a chance to, to sort of respond to that. So um, you're talking about positioning yourself so unique that you become the only option for the right people. And then you also talk about the concept of PPM. So that is um, person at what, what, what does it stand for? Personality. I wrote down the minute. acronym and forgot to write down what it stands for. Yeah. Personality. personality per minute. Right. So how do you sprinkle more of yourself through your writing? Help walk me through like a before and after. So you can just make something up, you know, hypothetically, but like a tweet might look like this and, you know, it's boring. It's, it's kind of bland, but then it might look like this when you're increasing your personality per minute. Yeah, it's, it's super hard to come up with an actual example, but if we would speak generally just, uh, yeah, like great example again is George then because He's super good at adding his personality into his writing. Just when you would go to any other account, like you would see people using templates, people using the same structures over and over again and just changing the theme or the topic. But George has genuinely good like story tweets and tweets where he highlights his philosophies and values, not only in copywriting or copy thinking, but also in other things in life, which is which is great. And again, that's exactly what makes him attract people that agree with those values and philosophies. So, um, it, yeah, it's super hard to find a particular example, but when you just read writing that has a lot of PPM in it, that has high PPM rate, then you just, you know it, right? A good example of a writer that has su that's super good at doing this, and this is not this is not a writer from our space necessarily, but he, he's like an author. He, 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 it's, it's Mark Manson, the author of... The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, which is a bestseller, so I bet a lot of listeners know it. It's the book I'm reading right now, and he's a super good example at this, because like every single sentence, you feel his personality, that he is a... Uh, he, he uses a lot of swear words, and mm. he's probably, like... It looks like he's a lot against authorities and stuff like that, and he's a bit rebellious. But again, there are going to be people that like it, and people that don't like it, and those people that like it, like, they will actually love it, because... He's bipolar. He's very like two-sided, so he's going to either have fans or haters. And 
yeah, so right. it, personality per minute, yeah, it's a lot about using your own jokes, referencing your life stories. And yeah, I'm not sure if I did a good job of explaining that, but I hope. Yeah, I, th I think you did a great job of explaining it. And I, I guess I'm, I'm curious more, like you don't have to get a, a specific example or anything like that, but what sort of questions are you asking yourself when you're writing of, of how you can increase that rate in, in your work? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I like to do a lot is to reference some past funny stories or anecdotes to whenever I'm writing. So, for example, one of the things that happened to me recently, and now this is like a true story, it, it's, it, it's, it's probably a longer story, but to cut it short, we were, uh, I did Taekwondo and we were having self-defense training one day, and it was self-defense against knife. And uh, I was the attacker during this practice, and like the other girl's job was to get the knife out of my hands, and then like get me to the ground. And accidentally, I fell onto the knife, and the knife stabbed in my right leg. And this is a hell of a story, right? Like it hurts. Uh, it not hurt a real more. knife. <laughs> not not a real knife. It was like a butter knife. A real knife. A butter knife. So. Oh, okay. 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 So. That hurt quite a lot. Then it's a good story. Like, actually, when this happened, one of the first <laughs> thoughts in my head was, this is going to be a good story to tell on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a true professional. <laughs> yeah, that's how you recognize an obsessed individual. So, so then you... <laughs> yeah, but... Right? <laughs> like, it's everything is okay now. Like, I can walk. I have my leg okay. It's everything fine. But... Whenever I get Good. the chance, I really try to reference this story, like even in replies to regular tweets on Twitter when I try to like, you know, be uh, when I try to be a bit more lighthearted. And also in, in, in my, I don't know, I feel like I'm also going to write an email around that soon. I even like did once, but it was with That's a different cool. goal, with a different goal. But yeah, so one of the things I try to whenever I write something, I just try to ask what sort of funny anecdote. I know this isn't probably that funny but you know what i mean what sort of anecdote can relate to this that that's one of the things right and then also um, it's also a lot about just being able to make fun of yourself and like not taking things so serious you know mm -hmm. so i think kieran drew does this really well where he has his welcome email for the newsletter and there's i don't know it word for word but the lines go something like uh, the rumor says that my newsletter is one of the greatest newsletters on writing there is. Okay, maybe I made made up that rumor, but it's catching on. So something like that. Those like really small jokes that, uh, <laughs> yeah, make you like help you, it help help show people that you're not taking yourself seriously. Yeah, and another great example is his name is Daniel Frazel, and he's I I'm not sure if he's on Twitter, but he has he's super big on. Uh, like on writing emails, like he emails his list multiple times a day and a lot of people hate him for it. But again, he's also a great example of being bipolar so that he either has fans or haters and he's really good at what he does and like every single email is super entertaining. So uh, yeah, if you want to, again, if you want to increase your PPM rate, then he's definitely a person to study. So yeah, try to find ways to reference some jokes, to reference some past experiences and... Yeah, it's also it's not it, it's kind of a skill. It's not what you, it's not like you sit down and decide it, okay, now I'm going to be entertaining. It's something that you have to over time you have to you have to like pick up the taste for what's actually going to be entertaining for both you and the audience and like I used to be super plain and boring while, during my writing. So, and thing things that definitely help a lot is also just studying those entertaining writers and try to rip apart of what makes their writing entertaining and then try to reuse that in your own writing claudia i your your first show that you did on the podcast is one of the most uh watched and listened to episodes in my catalog so i'm i'm grateful to have you here and knowing that you always have incredible information and actionable advice to share. Uh, so to, to wrap things up, I wanted to give you a chance. What, what are the three things that you'd want to leave people with today? So the first thing, which I feel like is the theme of uh, this entire podcast is 
uh, you should not aim for building an audience, but you should aim for becoming someone worth following or like building yourself in a way and also marketing and distributing yourself in a way that's eventually going to attract the right people, which brings us to the second takeaway, which is you should not, when it comes to good positioning, you should not aim for pulling in as, as much people as possible, but pulling in the right people. So being very bipolar, being very expressive about your values, philosophies, and beliefs. So then you should not have people that just like, you know, like you, but you should have either haters or people like that love you your true diehard fans and yeah being authentic and being super expressive about your values and, and stuff like that is definitely what helps and helps your positioning so then you also become the only option for the right people you know for the for the for your target audience and the last lesson which i think is very important is focus more on principles on the big picture of things over those nitty-gritty strategies and hacks that you know people try to hook you on. Hey, thanks so much for being a part of the show. Let's continue this conversation. Feel free to connect with me on Twitter where I'm at Craig Shoemaker. So go out and have an amazing day. I hope you get a chance to find someone to love, find someone to forgive and find someone to encourage because we are most certainly not in this alone. And I'll see you again here soon on the Leverage 3 Podcast.